Hey, what's up, fellas? Doing some testing again for Eric here today for a quick recap. This is what we did yesterday. We tried to fire this thing up and and see if the pump and the PWM was going to work, and it did not. It's given us this strange pulsation effect. It won't give us a steady flame. Um, a similar thing happened the other day when I was working on a small oxygen burner. I just could not get the PWM to steady up. We do got a little bit of air in the lines right now, which is causing a lot of it. But for the most part, once the air gets out of the line, it should even up a little bit. And it's not. As you can see here, it's just pulsating. It goes up and down. And it's just not an acceptable operating mode. So I'm gonna have to do something about this. And what I came up with was a small bypass valve setup. And it looks like this right here. Basically what we have on the left is the bypass valve that allows the fluid to circulate from the discharge of the pump right back into the intake. And the valve on the right is called the flow valve. And what it does is restricts a static loop of pressure. It's not exactly static, it's a flowing loop of fluid, but you can cause a, a pressure in that loop by closing the bypass valve and the flow valve in tandem, you can squeeze off the fluid in any way you want it. So you can go from the maximum pressure of the pump down to the lowest possible flow, you can get that valve to modulate. With needle valves, you can get like parasitic pump precision with these things. So just a quick refresher to get it in our heads of how ineffective some of these PWMs can be. You see we're just getting this pulsation effect. The pump's going up and down on power. Even on high fire, we're still getting this pulsation. And I've encountered this a lot. Not all PWMs do it. But now I've wasted all this money into on expensive electronics when I could have just done it with some valves and T fitting. So let's take a look at the alternative. The sole purpose of this test was to do some vibration testing on some burners. Eric has a tractor that needs to do some Bahan without these flames going out on him when he hits a bump. So what we've got is a pump that's going to counteract that gravitational effect when you go down a hill real fast or when you hit a bump when you got a siphon going the fluid column in the fuel lines is temporarily interrupted kind of like the way you feel butterflies in your stomach when you go down a hill a similar thing is happening to the fuel and these burners they can handle a drastic loss in air what you get is a, just a big stupid lazy flame but if you lose fuel with the air on high, you will quickly experience a flame out, obviously. So that's kind of what happens. We can see here we now have total control of the flame. There's no pulsation. It's a steady flame. The frame rate of this camera is a bit deceiving. The flame does not actually look like that in real life. It's actually a high velocity flame. You are seeing like 16 pictures a second of this flame, like captures. It, it really is deceiving, and I've noticed this in editing. The flame looks like a blowtorch, a smooth, unfeathery flame in, in person, but during editing, we're getting this feather effect, and I know it's got the frame rate. So here we go with the test. We're gonna beat the crap out of this thing with the hammer, just to see if it can take some hits without going out. And I accidentally knocked the nozzle out of alignment doing this, and I don't notice it at first, but notice how the flames start to point down now because the nozzle's pointing up. So I think you're good to go, Eric. I do not see this thing going out. And even though this nozzle is a little bit different than the ones you have, I don't think that matters. I think it's basically that gravitational effect. I experienced the same thing building an ice melter for a guy. If you'd hit a strong bump, the burner would go out. And I know for a fact it's because the fuel flow is interrupted by the gravitational effect. So it looks like I haven't yet figured out that the nozzle's out of alignment. Oh, there he goes, he figured it out. It took him a minute. So you can see how important nozzle alignment is. 
We now got that flame straightened out a little bit. I didn't turn it much. It's got one of those long range effects where a small movement down range has a huge effect up range. So, perfect control with this pump. You can turn that valve on the burner up and down now. And uh, I'm just kind of running it through the ringer here. I don't do this for much longer. I just want to make sure the thing doesn't go out. If it went out one time in this test, I was going to sit down and think about it. I just wasn't, I got lucky, I'll tell you that. The pump beat the hell out of me, but the concept is flawless here. It, there is nothing going to put this thing out. You could almost pick it up and swing it around like a sword, and I bet the thing would keep going. Oh yeah, you can go Baja on this thing now, dude. Look at that. Ain't no way that's going out. I think we're good to go. It's about time we uh, take a look at the bypass valve and see exactly what we got going on here. So, again, that flame does not really look like that in person. But this is the bypass valve right here that has to be closed when you go to prime the system when you initially hook it up. You see, we're not even really running at any pressure there, and I've got the flow valve open all the way. You can see the flow rate, and I'm using that valve right there to modulate the flow. There's my dirty diesel tank. So, this is pretty much what i seen on my end. This thing is definitely uh, ready to take some hits. Yeah, that flame does not look like that in person. It's a high velocity flame for sure. There's a substantial amount of fuel blasting in that thing. It's incredible how much fuel these things can eat up. Pretty cool. It's like got an Aventura effect going from the front of the burner to the back. So, just remember that. Turn that thing off when you go to first start the pump or else it won't pump the fuel out of the tank. You're probably better off putting the fuel pump below the fuel tank. I'm just giving it a final little shake test here. I can't imagine you hitting anything this hard. I mean, I'd like to think that you could, but I, I would imagine you're probably gonna be doing about five miles an hour, but it can still get pretty bumpy sometimes. Um, we did talk about deflating your tires a little bit. I don't, I don't think you're gonna have to worry about any of that this time. But as you can see, I was just hooked up to a 12 volt power supply. So there you have it, Eric. I'm about ready to throw you in a box, get you mailed off to California. I think you're in California also, ain't you? I've got another California job going on too. So, as you can see, no vibration is putting that thing out. Now, granted, this is a different burner than what you got. It's a different nozzle, but I still think the principle applies. You're losing fuel flow when the unit bounces you get that temporary weightlessness, so the siphon stops, and even the momentum of the fluid that's already moving is counteracted by a fast downward motion. So the fuel is temporarily interrupted, and this pump's gonna mitigate that 100%. So I guarantee you're not gonna have any more flame out, and this thing is so easy to use. I ended up being able to just slightly close this a little bit to get more pressure that I wanted and then use the valves on the burner. This can be closed all the way with that pump running and it doesn't care. It only gets up to like 10 PSI. So this will connect directly to a 12 volt power supply. This cable is insufficient for a very long run. If you're gonna be running this cable, say 10 feet to a battery or something, you need to get a, a heavier gauge wire than this. But uh, this is it. This is the pump. And it's working flawlessly.